Hello Turtles, I'm Tim Bodette, and I've been making racing games as a business as alongside a full-time job for almost four years. I've shared many of the lessons I've learned along the way on this YouTube channel for you to learn from and experience. This video is sharing some information behind my decision to become a full-time indie game developer, including the risks involved and how I mitigated them. Stay tuned for an important message about the future of this channel at the end. I've wanted to make my own games as a business for more than 20 years, learning, experiencing, preparing, and saving a runway to give myself the best possible chance of a success. To me, success is being able to live comfortably off the money coming in from selling my games. I don't need millions of dollars, large teams, or big fame. I just want to live a simple life while making my own games. That is my idea of success in this venture. Going full-time in my business and games is by far the hardest and scariest thing I've tackled in my life, and that comes after being circled and bluff charged by a bear while hiking 2,178 miles. Success is not certain, but failing to try is even worse from my perspective. Going into this adventure, I have a bachelor's degree in game design development from Full Sail University, 15 plus years experience building games, five of those in the industry, at least a three-year runway in savings to cover the cost of living, money for business expenses like a lawyer, accountant, new PC, etc., some money set aside for hiring a contract help, and a supportive community of developer friends. For the last four years, I woke up at 6 a.m. almost every morning to do three hours of game development before my day job. Many evenings and weekends were also added to this effort, totaling more than 5,600 hours. Nearly all of this was streamed live on Twitch, where I continue sharing the good and the bad of running a business creating games. My projects. Archer. Created from concept to release in seven weeks and made my first sale. The objective was to get something out into the world to make a dollar. This was only released on itch.io as it was released as is in seven weeks. To date, Archer has made $170. Rally of Rockets. The second project was an online multiplayer freestyle racing game that was planned to be released as is after four months of development. I removed the deadline because I wanted a quality product, though after eight months the project was put on hold as that quality level would take far too long, cost too much, and be unlikely to return the investment. This was a hard decision, but very valuable lesson. Turbo Boom. This is the first and so far only project I pitched to publishers, which was a great experience. The project has taken about 1,000 hours to create so far, but is on hold for logistical reasons. There are a couple months left once those get solved, and focus returns to Turbo Boom. Accelerate. I experimented for Unity for a month to see how I could improve the workflow of my own engine. The prototype of Accelerate was created for Ludumdare 46, ranked 12th in fun, and took three months to become my first product. While it hasn't recouped the cost of development, it did better than my expectations and I learned a lot about the release cycle and marketing. Engine Development I've been working on my own engine since 2012, with each game adding a small feature or improvement. This is not the easy path, nor would I recommend anyone try it without serious consideration. My benefits include full ownership, full control, fixable bugs, and I enjoy the low-level work. Risks of Full-Time Indie Game Development while I want to inspire you to chase your own dreams and ambitions, it is critical that you understand the risks of the major decisions like becoming a full-time indie developer. This is a very risky life decision and should not be taken lightly. The impacts may extend beyond just you. Uncertainty of selling games. Making money by selling games is uncertain, sales are not guaranteed, and it is extremely difficult to know what an audience will actually buy, not to mention reaching that audience in the first place. Not making sales eats directly into the runway of savings and would be a point of failure for me that requires finding a new full-time job. One way to reduce this risk is to ensure the runway is large enough for multiple projects. This ensures you put your eggs in different baskets and don't have a single point of failure. Hiring a marketing consultant, even for just a day or two, to help with planning can also increase the chance of finding the audience and getting exposure for your games. One job with all the hats. Being a full-time game developer will contain many tasks that require skills you may not have learned yet or practiced deeply. This will cost a fair amount of time spent learning the skills, potentially lowering the quality of results, and in worst case, could have negative repercussions by doing something incorrectly like accounting or taxes. 
I mitigated this by having money set aside for hiring additional help from an accountant, artist, or whenever I need some skill I might not have. Not enough time to do it all. While going at game development full time does increase the amount of work one can do, there is still not enough time to do everything. You must limit the time and budget for a project to ensure possible return on the investment. My research indicates most indie racing games that sold reasonably well earn in the ballpark of ten dollars to $15,000. For potential profits, this requires a budget with less than that figure. Unfortunately, working within those constraints means there is not enough time to do everything and some value is limited. I do my best to mitigate this by weighing each feature for how much effort it takes per the value it adds to the particular project. There are features that while valuable require too much effort to get a good enough score to do. Can also reduce this risk by using the project budget to hire out additional help. This can actually lower project costs spent in your time and increase the quality of the product. Hiring additional help. However, hiring additional help doesn't come without risk itself. You might work with someone that overpromised what they could actually deliver. Perhaps they are unable to reach the expected quality levels or just flaked out after hundreds of excuses. There is also your own time to consider as well, as it can take a significant effort to communicate your needs. To mitigate these risks, try hiring through people you know and trust or otherwise reputable sources. A well-written contract can offer some protection too. Business needs versus personal desires. One of the most difficult problems for indie game developers is focusing on personal desires rather than business requirements. Working on a project just for fun is great when this is for a hobby or not the main source of income. But as a business creating income is a primary concern and fun projects or features can distract from adding value that would otherwise increase sales. It is also possible to be blinded by a project that won't return on its investments like had I continued on Rally of Rockets. Taking a little time to do a business review each month reduces this risk and ensures focus remains on the needs of the business. Losing interest in indie game dev. For the last four years, I considered myself making games as a business and not as a hobby. I leapt out the window in September 2021 and my feelings have changed more than expected in those first months. Stress has increased dramatically despite knowing I have at least a three year runway. My interest in being an indie developer is still high as ever, but perhaps this was more entertaining when living costs were covered by working. Does being an indie developer stop being enjoyable when money and pressure are introduced? While this goes against what I just said to mitigate the business needs versus personal desires, there is more to life than just working, and some fun projects, even without business motivations, will help keep interest higher. This must be carefully balanced and ultimately, the more business motivations that can mix into the fun projects, the better. Burnout, losing focus, or getting sick. While working on Turbo Boom, I suffered from burnout designing the levels. It took a long time for me to figure out what the exact cause was. Thankfully, at the time, I had a full-time job as my focus was sporadic and progress was slow. But this does present a big risk of the periods of time where I do get burned out or lose focus or become sick, etc. The only way I foresee of solving this before it becomes problematic is to sleep enough, eat well, and exercise regularly. There are many more risks that are unknown, the unknown unknowns. As an indie game developer, I have to make decisions and commit to them, sometimes without knowing all the details. The fact is, some decisions will work and others won't. That is the life of doing games as a business. What is to come? I am now a full-time indie game developer and priorities are shifting. I began regularly posting videos to this YouTube channel in 2020 to help other developers by sharing the lessons I learned and to build my own skills in filming and creating videos. I have learned a lot along the way and will continue learning throughout my adventure. Going forward, I won't be posting videos regularly as I must focus on my business. A video may be released on rare occasions, though the format and quality may shift. Perhaps it is surprising, but most of these videos took 15 to 20 hours of effort some into the 30s to reach the quality levels I was happy with while learning new tricks to improve quality and speed up the process. To continue learning game development tips and techniques with me or experience the indie dev lifestyle, join my stream on twitch.tv slash timbodet. I go live almost every day from 6 a.m. ish Eastern time working on racing games as a business. I do my best to inspire and motivate others while remaining open and transparent about the challenges along the way. Hope to see you soon, 
say hello. Until later, turtles, have a good one.